Hey, g'day guys, welcome to another video. Um, been a bit tied up this week. Um, did quite a bit of study with my Lamies. So I just recently got my Lamy certificate with, uh, through CASA, so recognised for my, for my RAF time um, as a techo. Um, so that's fantastic. So all signed up now, ready to go. So that's where most of my time has been spent this week. Done a fair bit of wiring as well. Um, and just uh, waiting on parts at the moment. Engine mount and cowl will be here soon. Hopefully by the time I do another video, it'll be the unboxing of my engine mount and my cowl and the engine and propeller. I've got all that coming. Um, but quick video, show you where I'm up to. Please enjoy. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, like and subscribe. Thanks guys. Alright, g'day guys. Um, just want a bit of a shout out to all the guys that have recently joined my channel. My name's Scott Matthews and I'm building a Zenith CH750 cruiser in my shed. So I started this aircraft, a little bit about me I guess, I started this aircraft about almost six months to the day ago. Um, just signed up about 480 hours, um, putting the aircraft together and documenting that as I go. I spent 30 years in the Air Force working as a um, techo or an engineer if you like. On um, They're up there on the wall, worked on HS748s, um, De Havilland Caribou aircraft, C-130 Hercules, E and H models, um, over in Perth on the BAE Hawk, which was fantastic. Had a couple of backseat rides in a Hawk, unbelievable experience, um, and later on P3 Orions. Um, so all my life I've been around aircraft. When I left the Defence Force, started a drone business, um, I was operating drones under the guise of iFly RC. Also during that time, the last 40 years, um, I've been heavily into radio controlled model aircraft. I think a lot of my um, aero modelling mates are watching um, and those skills are very transferable. Aerodynamics don't lie um, and a lot of the skills, like in the old days you had to build a model aeroplane, a lot of people just think of those foam, those foam ones that you throw together, shake and bake type of system. Um, but to actually build an aircraft from scratch, a model aircraft, is fantastic. So I thought I'd just take it one step further um, and have a go at building a Zenith kit. I um, also i am lucky enough to own a Jabiru aircraft. So on my channel, we'll, um, where I think it's appropriate, um, we'll go for a fly and check something out. Um, I've, got, I've got something in mind in the near future, so that'll come up on the channel soon too. I also want to try and keep it interesting, uh, put the information out there, get a video out once a week at least. And let's get into it. Okay, avionics. So I've got my MGL avionics and I'm still still waiting on a few harnesses um, to come and for the life of me I still can't quite work out whether there's this is a well this is a CAN bus and all the wiring diagrams refer to a, a 232 port R232 which I believe is this um, but I'm not, but I've got to find out whether you just use the can or you use both or they both do the same thing. I'm not 100% sure. So with the compass for argument's sake, um, it's fairly self-explanatory. I have the compass with this CAN bus which has the Molex connectors on there and a positive and a negative. And that's, um, that's reflected in the, in the wiring diagram here. So your two Molex connectors and off to ground and power. Nice and easy. And you can daisy chain that. So on the bench here I've just got that connected to this harness, whatever that'll plug into next. So that's fine and dandy. However, I'm just having a you know a bit of trouble. This is the wiring diagram that's supplied. Yeah I've got a yellow I've got a yellow wire in the cockpit there. Um, here it is, clearly identified, not labelled yellow or anything, but it's audio out. So yep, there it is, it's drawn and it's audio out. Doesn't tell me where it goes. And moving up the front here, I've just, um, one thing that has, has caught me out, I'm not huge on computers, getting on a bit, I guess, with all the lingo. So I bought the Guardian iPad mount. Yep, send me an iPad mount, fantastic. This is 9.7. So I can hear a few of you laughing already. So this is for a 9.7 inch iPad mount. I haven't measured it yet, but I think it's diagonally or the screen size that you actually measure. So, great, I'll get a nice new iPad. Well, 
My cruiser is already outdated. They don't make 9.7 inch iPads anymore. Um, and if anyone's bought a Guardian um, you know, flush mount iPad mount, this thing, you'll know they're not cheap. But it's outdated already. So anyway, I've jumped online and ordered a 9.7 iPad 6. And I think they're up to iPad, I don't know, 8, 9 or 10 at the moment. So hopefully the one I get will fit in there. It's a reconditioned new old one, if that makes sense. So just something to look out for. Now to power the iPad, I was a bit lost there. So I, I've ordered in this, um, you know, it's like a cigarette lighter type system. There's no cigarette lighter on there. So it's actually not like a cigarette lighter, but you know what I'm getting at. Two USBs um, in the front. It's got its own circuit protection. I think it's four and a half amps written on the front and with the tabs, the four mil, sorry, quarter inch tabs on the back. Um, and they're also, you've got to be careful, that is, um, there's a positive and negative. So that has got polarity on the back there. So I'm using that um, onto my avionics bus bar and then that bus bar, bus, that bus bar also has um, a circuit breaker, circuit protection as well. So I'm not too sure with the iPad when it's on in flight whether I'll be able to charge, whether it'll charge itself or it'll just maintain. Say it's at 70% when I take off, it'll probably just stay at 70%, I assume, if it's on all the time. Um, I'm not sure if it has the capability to actually charge. I'm also, you know, I don't want to overheat things. Now the Guardian sends out this really nice heavy gauge iPad lead. Um, the ones you buy at the shop, you can get them pretty cheap, but I didn't want to sort of have any issues. So I've used this, which is about a metre long. So I've run along here. I've used aluminium tape, taped it to the airframe. It's up to the side. Uh, this is where it goes into the, um, the actual charge point. And then I've just run it along the top of the iPad mount itself um, with the aluminium tape. So it sits there nicely. It's not all bunched up to create heat, hot spots and melt. Uh, and then when I do need to take, need access to the bus bars, take the iPad, four screws out, push that in. Um, worst case, I can just tear the tape off. I do have access up underneath if I need to. So that's where we're going at the moment. Then I've got a, I've got a separate um, USB port on a lead. And I'm just working out, that'll plug into the other slot and run down the center console. Um, I'm toying with the idea of having it in here somewhere. But the problem I can see, one of the issues I can see, I'm just trying to work out where to put that iPad, sorry, the USB port, um, you know, for a passenger or myself. If I'm flying by myself, plug it in there, throw the device on the seat, that's fine. Maybe down there. But if the passenger tucks their feet in, they're going to wipe out the lead. Um, ideally that way. But I want to... I've been procrastinating a fair bit about this. Um, you've got obviously the flight controls take priority. I don't want a USB. I don't want to annoy the flight controls just by having an extra... There's enough stuff to run through there without USB going past the flight controls. Um, so I might put it up here somewhere, take into account the toggle switches are behind there put it up there somewhere. All this obviously will get tied up when I'm completed it. That was the other thing as well. I built this shelf for it to put stuff on and what did I do? I bolted this on the side. Um, I was going to mount it vertically. Uh, there was a few issues there. I think having it vertically, I don't know, just seemed like these could drop off or something. Um, it was nice and neat. Made up an L bracket with a hole in it. Go on the side out of the way. Seemed to sit a bit better. Um, also, if I hold it vertically and all the leads come down, um, you can actually see it up underneath. So I'm a bit pedantic like that. So when you look from the front, all this will be clear under here. So that is my USB setup at the moment. Okie dokie. Uh, I'm just working on the MGL compass. So I'm still racking my brain with the, um, the wiring diagrams. But the compass is one thing I can do. Um, so the compass is just daisy chained and a positive and negative. So like they advertise, couldn't be simpler. That's fine. Plugged it in. One thing to note, 
and it's interesting you mount what's it say a line arrow with roll axes of aircraft this side up so I might be reading into this too much but you know a line arrow with roll with roll axis of aircraft I'm assuming it's got to be specific so the center line of the aircraft is here and you mount it like that um, as opposed to my OCD I want to mount it on the center line does that make much of a difference anyway I've mounted this arrow on the center line like that um, otherwise I'd assume if it wasn't that critical they'd put this line in the center of the device so anyway that's what I've gone with I've mounted it slightly off center the trouble with that is it doesn't uh, it'd be nice if it sat behind the center console so you can imagine line that up with the center line so it doesn't quite line up with the center console that's just my OCD so what I've done with the compass is I've got my two trays I've made a, a bridge if you like or a bracket down in there um, dropped it down four inches so the compass will now I can slide it up in there the compass is going to sit down in there and there's the bracket that I made up so it's dropped down away from everything a little bit um, bear in mind I've got a what's that, a galvanized metallic firewall um, these these things are metallic uh, the roll cage is metallic or steel uh, the rudder pedals are steel so that's where I'm going with the start with I've got the compass there center line on the center line of the roll axis I wire it all up um, I've also tried to get it level, it doesn't mention getting it level but I assume it needs to be relatively level um, I can shim that as required to get it perfect if I need to but I'm pretty sure once it's mounted do a compass cowl and just zero everything but going well alright compass just needs some non-metallic uh, bolts aluminium or plastic even um, just to mount, I've just got that sitting there on the mount at the moment hooked up with a Molex connector and I've got power over here to a circuit breaker for the compass flick the, um, once I hook a battery up flick the avionics, sorry the master on and avionics on and I get a green light on the compass however there's no information yet because I haven't got the terminators to go in the end of these plugs so waiting parts alright guys so here's where we're at um, got the electronics well underway I guess just with the MGL stuff I'm still um, still working my way through the probably too simple the wiring diagram I've got identifiers of wire coming out of the back of the EFIS yep clearly identified goes nowhere um, so I've identified all the wires and I've got them going nowhere at the moment so that's working well we won't dwell on that too much so where we're at I'm just waiting I've just hooked up the compass so I lowered the compass down a bit um, I went and got some stainless steel bolts so I used a magnet in the uh, hardware shop but I think I'm going to swap them over to brass the ones that hold the, the compass on so just waiting on the rest of my ha harnesses from MGL um, and until, until such time as that comes along I can't really do much I've got power to the compass at the moment but the end of the, um, the, end of the cables I need a, uh, what's it called, a terminator I think it's called yeah, terminator connector with a 120 ohm resistor in there um, that obviously brings it alive and sends the message back home that's where we're at at the moment with the electronics I'm going to tidy up the front but I'm also leaning towards, you know, I don't want to make it too neat because you too neat creates heat. There you go, make a t-shirt of that one. Um, I think if it's too neat, yeah, I'll start to get issues. Uh, but I'll still do nice bundles and try and keep it as tidy as I can under the, under the front here. Um, I got word that my engine mount and my cow are at the docks. Um, it's taken quite a long time. I could say something, but I won't. I'll try and um, try to make all this as positive as I can. Let's just say I paid about three times as much as I should have for the engine mount and the cow with shipping and GST and duty and anyone else want any money. I'll send you some money 
you know, just to say good day, and I've got my engine cow. So, a little bit annoyed at that, but I've got my engine mount, and the cow should be coming. Also, the engine, um, Jabber of Australia have been fantastic. They've got an engine sitting there for me, prop spinner, firewall forward kit, so that's all good to go. So, hopefully, I've paid all the big bills for now. Um, once the engine mount comes, comes, I'm very wary with the, um, the relationship between the firewall and my dashboard. I'll roll the top skin back down um, just to make sure when I, with the engine mount is all integrated with the cabin frame if you weren't aware. So there is that possibility. The same, it all goes back to my tailplane incidents as well. There is a potential there to lower the, um, the frame if I, if I muck up the mount for want of a better word at the front here. So I'll get the engine mount spot on and just pay attention, make sure I don't pull my datum, which was zero, um, the top of the cabin. I could potentially pull that down a bit, which will throw the tailplane out. Um, and also the relationship between the, I need to keep, the, keep it parallel, the dashboard and the firewall. Um, and I'll do that by rolling this skin down when I bolt the engine mount through the frame. Hope that makes sense. Um, so maybe we've lost what to do at the moment, um, waiting on parts, so that's where we're at. I think I'm going to redo some stickers on the dash, just under my, I wasn't happy, just, um, it's funny when you look at something a second time, I come out and looked at my circuit breakers, I had a bit of tape there and put all those little tiny um, dynamo labels under my circuit breakers and you just look at it and think, what was I thinking? So I'm just going to redo those now. But for now that's where we're up to, so not a lot of building in that one. But I just want to get across as well, I guess, um, I'm just showing everyone how, I, how I'm going about doing it. Um, it's not all pull out parts and rivet, I think that, those days are gone now. So you really need to knuckle down, um, do your homework, do your research, order your parts. Um, and distributors, answer your emails, that really help people like myself. Um, so yeah, we'll push on, having a lot of fun, going well, thanks for watching.